Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram and over on Facebook at Me Crafty Scrapper Creates. And today is another episode of M Scrap Busters. And that is a challenge, a weekly challenge here on my channel um, for you to get inspiration to use up scraps and otherwise junk. And today we are making a little mini four pocket folio from one junk mail envelope. So everybody gets these, even if you pay all of your bills online, you still get junk mail in your mailbox. So grab one of these, all of them have, most all of them have that little window on there. Grab one of those and we're gonna make a little folio. And I have a secretarial pocket here, a regular standard shallow pocket there. Have a few, a couple of little tags there, a little tag here. And then I have one of those heart collage journal cards that we made a couple of months back there. And then here is another tag here, but you can see it in that front window and I've got paper in there so when you pull out your tag you still have a pretty pocket and then I have mine closed with some little velcro dots and I have these listed in my Amazon storefront if anybody is looking for these it's a pack of a thousand so these will do me for my entire lifetime <clears throat> but um, and they were very cheap too for a thousand of them so I have that there and that's my little closure and this could be put into a journal like this glue the back down you're gonna get bulk of course but you could do it like that you could just tuck these into tuck spots that you have in your journals. You could, if I've got a pocket in this one, this is my little idea journal. Got a bag pocket, it could go in there. If you've got just a regular standard pocket on the front or back of your um, cover, it could go down there, or it's just a standalone project. And you could put gift cards in it or money or little notes of thanks or something like that and send this to somebody if you wanted to. It doesn't necessarily have to go in your journal. It can just be a standalone project. So what, firstly what we're going to do is we're going to get the back flap taken completely off. And I just go ahead and put it on my trimmer. It's just the easiest way I have found. Just put it on your trimmer and make sure it is straight. And just cut that top flap off because we don't need it in this project. Cut that top flap off. Then you're going to find a little piece of something something. So this is just a little piece out of my scrap bowl. And I'm lining this up, making sure that if I put it completely down in there, that it's gonna cover all of that, and it will. So now I just need to get my pencil and line this up and figure out where I need to cut it. So this is our first part of using scrap on this junk mail envelope. And I'm just gonna leave my trimmer off to the side over here, because I will have to use it quite a bit. Okay, and then I'm going to put glue all over the back of this piece and place it inside the envelope. Well, I'm going to throw my pen across the room too, or at least across my desk. If I don't throw at least one thing in a video, I mean, it's like, 
it's like you're not even truly watching Melina make a YouTube video, you know? There, and just scoosh it down until you've got it all covered, but it is lined up as correctly as possible. There we go. Okay, so we've got that inside flap taken care of. Now we're going to cover this, and I'm thinking I've got enough of this, maybe, to cover it. Oh, I sure do. Look at that. It's just enough, too. So I don't see any of the blue from my envelope. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is just put glue all over my envelope, not up there where we just put that little strip. And I'm going to cover every bit of this. And this paper right here came from the Lavender Collection, that little collab that Kara Brandon Designs was doing, or Creations was doing. And I had fussy cut a butterfly out right there. And that's why I have that little notch taken out. I'll rub that down. And you can use cardstock. I did use cardstock on the in, uh, inside of this one. So this is cardstock and it still folds up fine. Or you can just use some scrapbook paper or a digital like I am here. And then I'm going to flop it over and start trimming off all the excess. And then I will show you when you get up to the top flap here how I trim that off. Make sure not to cut the actual envelope because then you open up something and it's not a pocket anymore. It's just wide open. All the way up the side. And then just go ahead and cut off the top like this. And then we're going to go back and get that fold down in there done correctly. Okay, there is that, and then we're going to open it up, and just cut down to the fold here, and then just start cutting along that envelope flap. Then go straight down, and then go straight across. The inside of your envelope is probably going to look different than the inside of mine. So just cut it right along the envelope base. And it doesn't matter if you like the most precise. You can ink up everything that didn't get inked. And I am not caring that that is not perfectly matchy-matchy with what I just put on here. I'm usually not that much of a matchy-matchy girl. If you are, go for it. Find some scrap that is exactly the same as all your other scrap. <laughs> that hardly ever happens for me. So if it does for you, kudos. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and ink the top of this. Okay, so there is the inside all covered up. Nice and covered. Then we're going to turn it over on to this side. And I'm going to find a cutoff that is um, big enough to cover that. So on this one, I covered it with one of the other lavender um, digital pieces from Kara Brandon. So I'm going to hold that out like that, find me a cutoff really quickly. Okay, here is 
a piece that has been in my stash forever and I forgot all about this. Look how pretty that is. So, to get that window cut out like we need, what I'm going to do is get a pen um, or any kind of gel pen, something like that, that um, is not going to soak through and it's not going to adhere really good to this. And then I'm going to go around the window like this with this pen that will, the ink will not adhere to that plastic. I'll be able to wipe it right off. This is a little trick I learned. So I'm going to line up my cardstock like I want it. And then I'm going to go around that window where I just did that ink and smoosh down. So on the back of this, we get just a little faint outline of that window. And then I'm going to use my scissors and make a little hole and start trimming. Okay, so there's that to cut out. Don't worry about this being exact to that um, window because when you get it down, you're going to be able to ink around it and um, get it how you want it. So see, I think that's pretty good. I do want to do a little bit more here so it's not so square looking. There we go, and I'm going to ink inside that before I glue it down onto my envelope front. Okay, I'm using Vintage Photo today. I hadn't used Vintage Photo in a while, so I decided to get that out. And then I'm just going to start putting glue everywhere except on top of the window, of course. Okay, and if you'll notice, I did not measure my paper first. I'm just going to put it down, line up that window how I want it. Okay, and then I'm going to plop it over, make sure everything is covered. And then use my bone folder to really burnish that down. Okay, then trim off your excess. This is just like the easiest way for me because I don't measure that well. So when I measure out something <laughs> and I cut it wrong, then I've wasted that paper. This way, no waste. Use every bit that you need and then your little pieces go in your scrap pile. Now, is that the cutest or what? Love that. I'm going to ink all around the sides with my vintage photo. So pretty. I don't know where this paper came from but it is gorgeous. It's not too pale baby pinkish, and it's just so pretty. Love it. Okay, so there is that all inked up. Now, I'm gonna fold it in half. And you just gotta make sure everything's good and glued down so it's not moving around at all. Fold it in half and use your bone folder first 
to smush and then you can go back across it and burnish okay so here is the base of my folio got that beautiful bird that will be on the back so this is one that I would not want to glue down into my um, journal I would want this to be freestanding just so you could get a look at that beautiful bird and the wreath on the background now you need to if you are inking edges go ahead and ink that fold okay just like that and we need to cover this up so if you're not fond of whatever color is on the inside of your pocket you'll need to cover it up somehow so I'm wondering if I cut this piece down what that would look like in there so I'm going to open up my envelope see I like that that's so pretty let's go ahead and do that I'm going to put glue all over the back of this piece and put it down really well and then when I go to press it down in here I gotta make sure that I don't get glue anywhere else. And I just did get it on the fold of the envelope, so I'll need to fix that. And I'm just gonna put that paper where I want it, make sure that it's not going over the fold. And then I'm gonna get my messy rag and run it in there. Okay, pretty. I love that. That's so pretty. Um, then you can decorate the outside. Now on this one, all I did was put a little butterfly around this area. You can do whatever you want to. You can do some collaging if you wanted to. Um, whatever your heart desires, you could do that. I'm thinking maybe a little piece of this wide washi from the washi shop would look good in one spot or another and then maybe find me a die cut out of my ephemera pack oh I like that little tulips maybe and let's trim that off and that little point that I just made off. Who wants a point on the end of our washi? Not me. So I'm going to trim that off just like that. And we're going to let it overhang the pocket just a little bit. Cute. And then I'll go ahead and just wrap it around because it goes in there too. I like that. Okay. And then I got this little bird die cut and I'm going to have it lapped over the window a little bit too just barely like that and we could even put um, like a little word label or something like that if we wanted to this one didn't need much decorating at the top because I had those little birds I love that. Now we want to make us a tag to go in here and we need to make our pockets for inside and the stuff to go in those pockets. So on this side I just did a standard little straight pocket and on this side I did a secretarial pocket so a triangle pocket and um, I thought maybe I could just do yep the inside pocket here out of what I put on the front 
and I'm going to measure over from the fold. So here is my fold. So I need it inside the fold some, and then I want to start it about right there. So I'm going to make myself a line with a pencil. And I'll show you how I line this up on my trimmer to get my easy secretarial pocket. So I'm just lining up the mark and then lining up the other mark that I made. Just like that. And hopefully that works and we have no issues. But if we go over the fold and it's just like the tiniest little overage on that fold, I just lop off the point. There we go. Yay. Now I'm going to ink this. That will cover up the pencil mark. Easy peasy. And make my little secretarial pocket on the one side. And I'm just barely going to put a little bit of glue on two sides. and adhere that on and then we'll need some kind of little something on the outside of that too let's look at what we've already got cut out here oh I like that green one to go along there and we'll put a little word label too of some kind cherish that's a cute one I have so many junk mail envelopes. Every time Brandon opens the mail, if there's one in there, he brings it to my studio and puts it in here. Cute. Because he knows I use me some junk mail envelopes, but I'm getting a rather large stash and I need to use up more. <laughs> I need to use more of them. I'm going to fold this kind of a little bit backwards and get me a little line, just a distressed line where it folds there. I didn't do it on that one. And then here I'm going to go straight across and get me a pocket put on there. Let me see if this one, oh I like that. Let's bring in a little bit of brown and I want a torn top so I'm going to make myself a line there it can go all the way across there get my trimmer and the straighty edge and lop that off and then I'm going to tear across and this other one I didn't tear it I just um, cut it with my trimmer and then I used my rounded corner punch on that one at the top this one I'm going to hold it there. Oh yeah, I like that. I like the torn edges. And we're not over the fold here, so we're good. And I'm going to ink all around that. And then put just a little line of glue on the sides, the bottom. And then place that on. Cute. Okay, so we've got our two pockets done. On this one, I put a little piece of lace across it. Um, this one is tall enough, made it a little taller than that one. This one's tall enough, I might put a little bit of a washi piece across here. Because this washi is 
so cute. And I'm just going to tear it just like the pocket is. Put it on. And then tear it again. I think I will try to line up that little torn piece just so we can get almost to the end of that pocket where I tore it wrong and then trim off that washi and we could put some type of little something or another up there there is beauty in simplicity I like that and then we need to trim off that little piece of washi that's hanging over there. It needed a little bit more, so I found me a label out of my stash and put that on there. So for my tags, it's going to go in this pocket, this pocket, and these two. I've picked out a few little fabric um, squares and a dolly and I'm just going to get some uh, scrap cardstock and make me some tags to go in here. Now this would be about for my envelope um, about four and eight is what I would need for this front tag here and just make sure that it's pretty because it's going to be showing on the outside here and I really like the look of that brown dolly so I think I'm going to put a little bit there this one just needs a little something extra at the top since it was just words okay and then trim off the excess Oh yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so plain Jane in this one I'm gonna put in this back pocket and I've just, um, this is some tea stain paper. I just fold it over, not all the way, just to give it a little bit of interest. And I'm putting it in there. I just had it a little bit taller than the actual folio is. So there's that and then this new printable that we have in the shop at scrapbookingwithme.com. It's the mason jar floral. Um, it also comes with mason jars uh, plain, so you can add your own stuff inside. Mama got all um, inspired by the last M Scrapbusters challenge, and so she got these digitals together. I'm going to trim this out and this is going to be put into my secretarial pocket here. I've had people ask what's an alternative to um, backing all of our tags with um, coffee dyed paper. I don't want to add any thickness or you know that's that's a little bit of trouble and it is um, to add something else to the back when you are and get this this is just some chipboard when you're making tags so this was already printed on um, cardstock I will I will think of my words in just a moment uh, this was already printed on cardstock and it was white cardstock so I'm just inking around the edges this is seedless preserves so I've just got the small one of it so on the back here if you didn't want to cover it with another piece of paper, but you still wanted to use it, you know, as a journaling spot, you could always just cover the back in some ink. So I went around the edges with tea stain, or not tea stain, vintage photo. And then I'm just going around the rest of it flat with the seedless preserves and so that gives us 
that there and you can blend out any of those little spots you made when you first started. And then there you have that and you don't even have to cover it with any paper if you want to, if you don't want to. And then you can write in black, black's gonna show up fine on that, or you can write in white. So there's my little mason jar that I'm gonna put in that pocket. I love those. Great job on those, mother. And then I've got a little stamp that I wanna put in that one. Okay, and then I have a little journaling card that we made in a past video. I'm going to put that there. Little leaf tag that we made in a past video. Little three gathering there. Just like that. And that is even Stevens with that up front so we don't have to worry about it showing over the front. Even though I wouldn't be upset if it did. Now we need to go ahead and put on, we need to drop some things off of our desk and onto our desk and then we need to put on <laughs> our velcro dot or whatever closure you want. Okay so what I do is I get the female side and the male side and I put them together and then I put this where I need it on one side of my project. Go ahead and take these out. And then you've got a sticky side there. So you're gonna put those together. Really hold it down so it gets adhered. And then you can take them apart and put your stuff back in the pocket. And you've got your closure. So now I just need my tag for the front. Okay, so then I cut this piece at four and an eighth. I'm just figuring out if I want to cut it shorter or not. I think I'm good with that. And let's go ahead and use our tag punch. Make our little tag corners. And I picked out a different color fabric. This fabric came from my Taper Lodgy box that I got back last year. And I got an email from them. I'm getting another one. Yay! They're sending me another one. So I'm excited about that. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of collage on the outside of this so that whatever I put on it will more than likely show on the inside. But you know, you want to place it where you know it will it'll show. So I'm going to do it just a little toward the bottom a little bit of collage like that. Yep. And maybe even put a little butterfly on the inside of it. Let's find something here. I know what. I'll do some more of this washi off to the edge of it here. So let's go ahead and glue all this down. Okay, just like that so it shows a little bit on the edge. I'm going to wrap that around. Give the back a little something something. But I'm not going to cover up the back too much because I want to be able to journal on the back of this tag. This was just a piece of cardstock from my stash. It is like a butter yellow. And just ink all around the edges. And I need to let this glue that's coming through the doily, I need to let that dry completely before I try to put it into the folio. Ink the back. And I'm going to cut a tab for the top of this tag. 
instead of ribbon like I did the other one. And if you don't know the tab punch, this is the uh, We Are Memory Keepers tab punch. If you've got this tab punch and you don't know this secret, fold your paper over, leave a little line so you can see through, pop it, and you have your folded over double-sided tab for anybody that didn't know that. Okay, I'm going to ink the edges on both sides, bottom, and then open it up, put some glue on, and I want this to be the front side. Okay, and then I'm just going to slide it down. So now you see a little bitty piece of everything that I collaged on that tag and close it up. So that is the four pocket. Now this, this envelope was taller than this one. Look at that. That is the four pocket mini folio made from one junk mail envelope. I love how these turned out. If you make some of these, I want to know about it. Make sure to use the hashtag M's Scrap Busters so that I can find you and leave you some love. Y'all have a great day. God bless. Bye, y'all.